A toucan crossing is different from other crossings because moped riders can use it, it is controlled by a traffic warden, it is controlled by two flashing lights, cyclists can use it. How will a school crossing patrol signal you to stop? By pointing to children on the opposite pavement, by displaying a red light, by displaying a stop sign, by giving you an arm signal. Where would you see this sign? In the window of a car taking children to school, at the side of a road, at playground areas, on the rear of a school bus or coach. Which sign tells you that pedestrians may be walking in the road as there is no pavement? What does this sign mean? No route for pedestrians and cyclists, a route for pedestrians only, a route for cyclists only, a route for pedestrians and cyclists.
You see a pedestrian with a white stick and red band. This means that the person is physically disabled, deaf only, blind only, deaf and blind. What action would you take when elderly people are crossing the road? Wave them across so they know that you have seen them, be patient and allow them to cross in their own time, rev the engine to let them know that you are waiting, tap the horn in case they are hard of hearing. You see two elderly pedestrians about to cross the road ahead. You should expect them to wait for you to pass, speed up to get past them quickly, stop and wave them across the road. Be careful. They may misjudge your speed. You are coming up to a roundabout. A cyclist is signalling to turn right. What should you do? Overtake on the right, give a horn warning, signal the cyclist to move across, give the cyclist plenty of room. Which two should you allow extra room when overtaking? Motorcycles, tractors, bicycles, road sweeping vehicles. Why should you look particularly for motorcyclists and cyclists at junctions? They may want to turn into the side road, 
They may slow down to let you turn. They are harder to see. They might not see you turn. You are waiting to come out of a side road. Why should you watch carefully for motorcycles? Motorcycles are usually faster than cars. Police patrols often use motorcycles. Motorcycles are small and hard to see. Motorcycles have right of way. In daylight, an approaching motorcyclist is using a dipped headlight. Why? So that the rider can be seen more easily, to stop the battery overcharging, to improve the rider's vision, the rider is inviting you to proceed. Motorcyclists should wear bright clothing mainly because they must do so by law, it helps keep them cool in summer, the colours are popular, drivers often do not see them. There is a slow-moving motorcyclist ahead of you. You are unsure what the rider is going to do. You should pass on the left, pass on the right, stay behind, move closer. Motorcyclists will often look round over their right shoulder just before turning right. This is because they need to listen for following traffic. Motorcycles don't have mirrors. Looking around helps them balance as they turn. They need to check for traffic in their blind area.
At road junctions, which of the following are most vulnerable? Cyclists, motorcyclists, pedestrians, car drivers, lorry drivers. Motorcyclists are particularly vulnerable when moving off, on dual carriageways, when approaching junctions, on motorways. You are approaching a roundabout. There are horses just ahead of you. You should be prepared to stop, treat them like any other vehicle, give them plenty of room, accelerate past as quickly as possible, sound your horn as a warning. You are about to overtake a slow-moving motorcyclist. Which one of these signs would make you take special care? You are waiting to emerge left from a minor road. A large vehicle is approaching from the right. You have time to turn, but you should wait. Why? The large vehicle can easily hide an overtaking vehicle. The large vehicle can turn suddenly. The large vehicle is difficult to steer in a straight line. The large vehicle can easily hide vehicles from the left. You are following a long vehicle. It approaches a crossroads and signals left, but moves out to the right. You should 
get closer in order to pass it quickly, stay well back and give it room, assume the signal is wrong and it really is turning right, overtake as it starts to slow down. You are following a long vehicle approaching a crossroads. The driver signals right but moves close to the left-hand curb. What should you do? Warn the driver of the wrong signal, wait behind the long vehicle, report the driver to the police, overtake on the right-hand side. You are approaching a mini roundabout. The long vehicle in front is signalling left but positioned over to the right. You should sound your horn, overtake on the left, follow the same course as the lorry, keep well back. Before overtaking a large vehicle, you should keep well back. Why is this? To give acceleration space to overtake quickly on blind bends, to get the best view of the road ahead, to leave a gap in case the vehicle stops and rolls back, to offer other drivers a safe gap if they want to overtake you. You are travelling behind a bus that pulls up at a bus stop. What should you do? Accelerate past the bus sounding your horn, watch carefully for pedestrians, be ready to give way to the bus, pull in closely behind the bus. You are following a large lorry on a wet road. Spray makes it difficult to see. You should drop back until you can see better, put your headlights on full beam, keep close to the lorry, away from the spray, 
speed up and overtake quickly. In which three of these situations may you overtake another vehicle on the left? When you are in a one-way street, when approaching a motorway slip road where you will be turning off, when the vehicle in front is signalling to turn right, when a slower vehicle is travelling in the right-hand lane of a dual carriageway, in slow-moving traffic queues, when traffic in the right-hand lane is moving more slowly. You are travelling in very heavy rain. Your overall stopping distance is likely to be doubled, halved, up to ten times greater, no different. Which two of the following are correct? When overtaking at night, you should wait until a bend so that you can see the oncoming headlights, sound your horn twice before moving out, be careful because you can see less, beware of bends in the road ahead, put headlights on full beam. In windy conditions, you need to take extra care when using the brakes, making a hill start, turning into a narrow road, passing pedal cyclists. Which of these plates normally appear with this road sign?
When joining a motorway, you must always use the hard shoulder, stop at the end of the acceleration lane, come to a stop before joining the motorway, give way to traffic already on the motorway. What is the national speed limit for cars and motorcycles in the center lane of a three-lane motorway? 40 miles per hour, 50 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour, 70 miles per hour. What is the national speed limit on motorways for cars and motorcycles? 30 miles per hour, 50 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour, 70 miles per hour. The left-hand lane on a three-lane motorway is for use by any vehicle, large vehicles only, emergency vehicles only, slow vehicles only. Which of these is not allowed to travel in the right-hand lane of a three-lane motorway? A small delivery van, a motorcycle, a vehicle towing a trailer, a motorcycle and sidecar. You break down on a motorway. You need to call for help. Why may it be better to use an emergency roadside telephone rather than a mobile phone? It connects you to a local garage. Using a mobile phone will distract other drivers. It allows easy location by the emergency services. Mobile phones do not work on motorways.
After a breakdown, you need to rejoin the main carriageway of a motorway from the hard shoulder. You should move out onto the carriageway, then build up your speed, move out onto the carriageway using your hazard lights, gain speed on the hard shoulder before moving out onto the carriageway, wait on the hard shoulder until someone flashes their headlights at you. A crawler lane on a motorway is found on a steep gradient before a service area before a junction along the hard shoulder. What do these motorway signs show? They are countdown markers to a bridge, they are distance markers to the next telephone, they are countdown markers to the next exit, they warn of a police control ahead. On a motorway, the amber reflective studs can be found between the hard shoulder and the carriageway, the acceleration lane and the carriageway, the central reservation and the carriageway, each pair of lanes. What colour are the reflective studs between the lanes on a motorway? Green, amber, white, red.
What colour are the reflective studs between a motorway and its slip road? Amber, white, green, red. What is the meaning of this sign? Local speed limit applies, no waiting on the carriageway, national speed limit applies, no entry to vehicular traffic. What is the national speed limit for cars and motorcycles on a dual carriageway? 30 miles per hour, 50 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour, 70 miles per hour. There are no speed limit signs on the road. How is a 30 mile per hour limit indicated? By hazard warning lines, by street lighting, by pedestrian islands, by double or single yellow lines. Where you see street lights, but no speed limit signs, the limit is usually 30 miles per hour, 40 miles per hour, 50 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour. What does this sign mean? Minimum speed, 30 miles per hour. End of maximum speed. End of minimum speed. Maximum speed, 30 miles per hour.
There is a tractor ahead of you. You wish to overtake, but you are not sure if it is safe to do so. You should follow another overtaking vehicle through, sound your horn to the slow vehicle to pull over, speed through, but flash your lights to oncoming traffic, not overtake if you are in doubt.